Hi everyone, it's Michael, and I'm so excited to do today's video because it's one that I have been preparing for for months now, and it is on the topic of algae. Now the title of the video is Understanding Algae, but realistically what we're assessing here is the possibility that algae could be dangerous or um, counterproductive for your orchids. So um, I will qualify that this video is very specific to a semi-hydroponic grow system. So if you're looking for an answer to that question as it pertains to a classic setup, um, I don't know if this is the video for you. Um, but we are assessing what that looks like within the context of a semi-hydroponic grow system. Now, um, Danny actually just posted a video kind of evaluating the inverse, which is, is there a possibility that having algae present in the uh, grow environment really helps or provides something really beneficial that was previously absent? Um, and that's a great video, I'll link it below. I really, really enjoyed it, it's really well put together. But I'm kind of assessing the opposite perspective of like, hey, is this gonna be a problem? So I've taken some notes for myself. Um, so let's just jump in. I know that some of this you already know, but we'll just talk about what is algae. Well, algae is a diverse group of aquatic organisms that have the ability to conduct photosynthesis. And they are the product of three different elements, light, nutrients, and water. So um, algae, grow really fast and they also die really fast. And as that dead matter decomposes, it consumes oxygen, uh, then it releases CO2, and then it acidifies the water. So that being said, um, and I'm sure you remember from my earlier videos, if you've been a longtime subscriber, um, my obsession with Fizan 20 as a proactive and preventative algae management system. Um, so I was a little over enthusiastic about that, but I want to explain why I was so intent on managing algae. And really it, it comes down to three core reasons. One, I was afraid of the possibility of, in the process of that algae growing and then dying, of it acidifying the water. I didn't want that to negatively or adversely impact my orchid's growth. Beyond that, um, I was concerned that as it consumes that oxygen, that it was going to compete for oxygen with the roots. And I thought that the roots wouldn't have enough oxygen. Um, so that was another reason. And the third reason was I was concerned that algae would be competing for nutrients with the orchid. Um, so those were my three core concerns. And I will revisit those at the conclusion of this video. Um, and we'll talk about whether or not those concerns were merited. So here's what I noticed in the process of using Fizan 20 as a form of chemical algae control. My plants were doing, they weren't doing terrible, but they just weren't doing anything, <laughs> frankly. Um, so in the process of killing the algae, what I, I made a huge oversight, which was that I was not only killing algae, I was killing all of the beneficial bacteria that were also present in the grow system. Now I brought an example. This guy here is my Dapper Dots Hybrid Catacetum. And I don't know if you can tell, but the uh, pseudobulb on it shriveled so intensely. And these uh, new growths halted altogether. Nothing was happening with them and I just couldn't figure out why. So now you can see it is absolutely just covered in this thick layer of algae because it's direct indirect sunlight. Um, but it's doing so much better. Now, as it pertains to what the function of the good bacteria is and how it operates, um, it's a little confusing. I just read a really interesting article about it, but the big takeaway is that, let me just make sure I get the verbiage on this right, um, very little is known about the composition and full function of orchid-associated bacteria, but it is almost universally recognized to have great and favorable impact on the plant's health. So, that being said, using Fizan 20 monthly to treat algae was effective. All of my grow containers were clean. All of my Leca pellets were still, they looked just brand new and it was very nice and it was very neat and it was very orderly as I like things. Um, but it was just killing all of the good bacteria and really halting and stunting the development of my plants. So once I figured that out, I started doing something else which was stupid, which was I just, started repotting my plants all of the time. So obviously in semi-hydroponics, you have a little bit more leeway with repotting. It doesn't impact the plants as badly as it would say if you were doing classic medium. But even so, a lot of these orchids were in the process of still converting to semi-hydroponics. It can take 
anywhere b before a plant really develops like significant momentum in this new grow environment, it can take up to four or five months. So within that four and five month range, I just kept unpotting plants because I just didn't want to look at the algae. Um, and that also adversely impacted their development and growth. So here is what I have come to speculate. This is my hypothesis. I think that the presence of algae shows that the plants are in a generally healthy grow environment. Um, and that's not substantiated by anything other than my own beliefs and my own experience. But when I see algae, and sometimes it'll take a long time for algae to begin to be present in a grow system, and it's because I haven't quite nailed the right nutrient balance or the right lighting balance. Um, but I've never seen algae present while a orchid is still struggling really badly, which is interesting to say. Um, so I'm just going to show you a quick clip um, generally of how it grows and its pattern of growth. I took a quick video earlier. So we're looking at an east facing window and the orchids that I have on the wall right next to it. And it's so interesting how the algae has developed and formed. You can see it's growing exactly where the light is. It's growing exactly where the nutrient solution and water reservoir are and where it has the optimal combination of moisture, nutrients, and light. So it's almost exclusively on the right side of each of these containers, which is so interesting. But um, in the past, the presence of this algae really offended my delicate sensibilities. But look at them, they're all doing so well. These plants are just living their best life. Um, so let's get back for the conclusion. I wanna review my original concerns, the three big concerns I had the water becoming acidic in the water reservoir. Well, in a semi-hydroponic grow system, you flush regularly. You're supposed to flush every single time you water. And if you're doing that, not only are you flushing out some of that dead and decomposing matter from the algae life cycle, you're also flushing out that water reservoir and refreshing it. So that's not a real significant issue. My second big concern was this lack of oxygen. Well, here's the funny thing. In the process of repeatedly and foolishly repotting my orchids, what I noticed was the algae doesn't grow inside of the LECA. It grows just around the edge. It grows in between the wall of the glass and your LECA pellets. And it stays there. It doesn't reach inside the root ball. It doesn't go, it doesn't transgress that line within the grow system. It's really just on the edge. So the algae that you see is the algae that you have. So that being said, the way that LECA pellets stack, they always have air between them. It's one of the reasons it's such an effective grow system. It's because it's such an airy medium. So even if the outer portion is getting clogged, it's really only competing for oxygen on the roots that are just on the outside, which really aren't the majority or the biggest um, provider of oxygen to your plant. So it, that's not a significant issue either. And my last big concern was that it would create competition for nutrients. And that's just, it just seems not right because we know that orchids are very, very light feeders they don't consume a significant amount of food um, and actually in my experience and I, I may just be stupid and I may just be wrong but um, I've actually found the algae the presence of algae to be somewhat constructive because I was having um, issues with mineral buildup in part because I didn't really understand what I was doing in terms of dosing it but um, the presence of algae in the grow system seems to be helping to metabolize and get rid of some of that buildup. It seems to be managing the bio load that's accumulating within the container. Um, I don't know if that's right. That's just my observation with my plants. But um, altogether, algae is an aesthetic issue, in my opinion, and in my experience. So it's an, it is an aesthetic issue that I don't care for. I don't think it's super cute. I don't think it's really um, appealing. But that being said, I do feel that I can manage that by putting it in, in I can put my plants in an opaque container um, so maybe they can stay in the glass and then have an opaque outer container um, if it really, really bothers me. But at this point, I'm just more curious to see how this narrative continues to unfold and see how the algae continues to impact growth. So um, those are just my thoughts. Take them for what they're worth. Um, I love you guys. Thank you, as always, for spending your time with me. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to like, subscribe, share if you found it useful, and well, you guys know the drill. Um, I hope you guys are all doing amazing and that you are staying warm during this fall. 
Um, I didn't, and I, now I'm getting sick. <laughs> but um, I love you all so much, and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Mwah. Bye, guys.